We're, we're tackling the angle of why Keith are crooked. I, I view the campaign the, the, is, is to get the ideas and the, uh, in front of the mothers. The mothers are going to mm. change the world. Yeah. Uh, they're the ones who come in. They come into my office they're in, with the internet now. They're so well educated about everything. They, they come in with an idea and they almost say, well, this is what I want. And they, they're, they're so well educated and, and a lot of it's courtesy of you. Uh, they they know more about me than I know about me sometimes, mm. <laughs> and that's kind of scary. But but also, the idea is that they're so concerned. So many of my, the patients that come into my practice, the mothers particularly, have had traditional orthotics and had bicuspids removed. They've had headgear. They've been pulled back. They the suffer. They've orthotics. been retra- they've had retractive orthotics. <clears throat> they have the pain pattern going on. They've connected mm. the dots. They don't sleep yes. well. No. And they are the most motivated to make mm. sure that their child will not go through the same mm. thing. So they'll they'll you know move move heaven and earth to get something different for their child. Yep. That's where the campaign has to be. Uh, and I see how I have, I have two daughters-in-law, uh, very bright women and very good mothers, and I see how they communicate with their mommy friends, and I sometimes laugh and j- joke with my wife, how did we ever raise our kids before the internet? I mean, we did everything wrong, I guess. But now th- these women are so informed that that the word passes, I mean, uh, from one to another, and they and they get educated, and they're willing to do almost anything to get this kind of thing. I mean, I have people who fly in to see me from out of state because they're unable to get the treatment where they are. Now that's motivation. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 for me, they come all from over Europe. It makes me almost embarrassed. Yeah. I I agree. I I, I, I I'm humbled because I'm yeah, just. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. view my. That's what I am. But but Bill, I think I, I, you share my passion for prevention, and really, right. my goal. Is to remove my business. Yeah, <laughs> the, they don't the, fly anywhere. The, Just, the goal yeah. of any healthcare profession really ought to be able is is to eliminate the need for it. Mm. So that we would have people be healthy on their own, and we would teach healthy lifestyles. Uh, we have to start out with our own selves. Uh, try, we have to eat well. We have to do exercise. We have to set the example for our patients and for our families. And once we do that, then hopefully that uh, passes over to other people and they see that uh, by example. And uh, it, 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 that's why I'm still at it at, at, at my age because I'm, I'm, I'm really tired of seeing the people come in mm-hmm. with, with the problems and particularly tired when I see kids who've, who've been ignored. They've had their lips apart, their mouths hanging open, they're sitting in, the, in my office, and literally they are 10 years of age, they have all their permanent teeth in. It's way too late for us to do the right thing. Uh, traditional orthotics at this point is only rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic, which is stupid. Uh, I don't even want to do it. When, I, when they come in like that, I, I feel bad. I don't want to treat them. I don't. I don't want to give them straight teeth. Uh, it's it's silliness because here's a here's a kid with sleep disordered breathing, and I know it. He's hyperactive. He's bouncing off the walls. He's not doing well in school, and he's been ignored. Well, no, he's been medicated up he's to been, the eyeballs, yeah. and uh, he they've spent. I mean, yeah. I don't you the insurance company in the U.S. or your national right. health in the England. It does cost a fortune. I, I have one of the saddest uh, patients came into my office a year ago, and this tells you just how crazy the state of the state of the world is. He had an eleven-year-old boy who was diagnosed uh, with sleep apnea by his camp counselor. Now, how sad is that? That a camp counselor sees this kid who's stopping breathing in the middle <clears throat> of the night, and and he, he says you got to go see an ear, nose, and throat specialist. So he refers him to the ENT that I work with, who confirms yes, he has sleep apnea. And the pediatrician had never said anything. The kid sitting in the chair looks not just half asleep, but half dead. And when you try to interact with him, I'm not sure that there are any neurons that are connecting in this kid's head. And uh, at this age, 
what do I have left to do? Uh, he's beyond the, the age when I want to do orthotropics, so what do I do? I expand and I expand and I expand, which is the traditional orthodontic mantra as they've finally gotten the word that we've got to do something about sleep apnea after all these uh, essentially two decades now of talking about airway and sleep apnea. Finally, the profession is beginning to recognize it. But what do they say? Well, we have to expand. <laughs> And I look at that and I, and I say, you can't expand your way out of an anterior-posterior problem. <laughs> your dad has shown that it was an anterior-posterior problem. The, the downswing. The, the, the downswing. Yeah, downswing. And, and, there, and there are other people who are in the sleep arena <clears throat> who understand that it is a lack of forward growth of the face that has caused us to have the problem. Many in the sleep arena uh, who don't understand this will will reference the, the issue of obesity. Well, yes, obesity is an issue. But in reality, a huge number of patients with these problems are, are thin, but their faces are down and back. Going back to this 11-year-old kid, we expanded and we expanded, we expanded as much as we can possibly expand. We, we almost make his ears fall off, uh, we expand so much. The sad fact is <laughs> the kid still snores because we, at this age, we can't do the orthotropic thing which your dad has so eloquently put forward. Uh, and I don't know that if this young boy has, I think he's got enough brain damage by age 11 that I'm not sure he's ever going to be right. And the more I, I say that, I have more authority in saying it because I hear some of the sleep lectures basically saying that. And how sad is it that now we have a kid who's 11 years of age, has seen the pediatrician his whole, you know, every for the normal checkups, because he's not some kid from the backwoods who, who was disadvantaged or the inner city who was disadvantaged. He came from an affluent family and was having all these appointments. And that the camp counselor diagnosed the sleep apnea, how sad is that? Yeah. So, Bill, we need to raise awareness. Absolutely. Yeah. That's kind of, and we need to come together to do this. I mean, there's, there's, no, there's no one person that has the answers. No, but I certainly don't. But what I do have is an awareness for it. And I'm willing to get on top of the mountain and scream and holler and say, hey, let's listen here to this. I mean, I was 15 when I decided to become a dentist. And I, 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 one of the reasons I decided to become a dentist is I didn't want to be a physician, have to worry about people, whether, whether what I did caused them to live or die. And here I am into the profession all these years and realizing that's exactly where I'm at. I'm in a position to do things that will affect someone's longevity. <laughs> if they listen to me, I truly believe that they will live a longer and healthier life if they take With a action. Nice face. <laughs> With a face that's better looking than mine. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, there's, there's, there's some good pros on this yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, I'm lucky. My wife married me anyway. Uh, but, no, I, I think kids should look good, feel good, and, and have great lives, uh, have, have a, a long and healthy life. But we're certainly not there, and the only way we're going to ever get there is the prevention mode. Yeah, okay. Listen, Bill. Sir, pleasure. Always is. Thank you very much. I hope this goes. I hope you can make this go. Get it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs>